Okay, guys. Okay, friends. For this one, emotional support vinyl. Interpol, the other side of make believe album review. Let's chat about it. Hey, friends, what's going on? John here from What's Spinning here tonight to chat about this latest album from Interpol, Manhattan based post punk legends. Uh, in the early 2000s, they meant the absolute world to me. Yes, if you haven't guessed it, I say coffee. I'm from New York. And growing up for me around bands like The Strokes and LCD Sound System and yeah, yeah, yeah. And most definitely, Interpol was really exciting. I mean, what else can I even say about their debut, Turn on the Bright Lights? I mean, it's a modern masterpiece. And their follow-up antics, while not the absolute gut punch that modern post-punk needed, I don't think it gets enough credit. Say what you will, Kamir, Evil, and Slow Hands are three of the best tracks the band has ever put out. But ever since, it's been tough, and yes, I'm well aware that I'm not the only one that thinks so. By the time our love to admire came along, Interpol sounded exhausted. And while, yeah, there's some great tunes on here still, certainly not all bad, it just seemed like it wasn't coming to them as easily. It showed them trying too hard as well, and by the time their self-titled album came along, they had lost all sight of the band that they were a couple of years back. I mean, 2014's El Pintor is a little bit better. I still think All the Rage Back Home is one of the best tracks they've put out since, like, antics. But it was far from anything remotely greater, genuinely memorable overall. Uh, now, their last album, Marauder, I, I had people, you know, reaching out to me say, oh, it's, it's it sounds like old Interpol. It sounds like them in their prime. I mean, yeah, sometimes. Complications was pretty good, but it was still so far from hitting any mark or leaving anything like to be desired i don't know i just i was not into it which leads me to this new album uh the uh, other side of make-believe oh i mean i was not really excited for this album truthfully i thought some of the singles leading up to this album were some of the worst the bands put out ever let's chat about it this album starts off with Tony, and right off the bat, it is a sad state of affairs. This is not a good intro at all. This pace sounds like they were like pulling teeth just to get this out of them. Paul Banks sounds bored, and definitely not in a cool way either. Uh, this instrumental is ho hum, dime a dozen. I could hear this in any sort of post punk throwback band. It's bland, it's spiritless, and I mean, I wasn't expecting anything great, but even this is sad. Uh, something changed. I think it's the worst track here. It is abysmal. It is really rough to get through. The last thing I want to hear from Interpol right now is a sort of just very half-assed, really no heart in sight piano ballad. It's just really awkward. It sounds like any who's who of modern indie or art punk or post-punk even with a slightly artsy edge trying to go for the Interpol sound and failing. Yeah, this isn't very good of an album. Uh, I will say this, though, because, you know, I, I like to try and be fair. There are some really great moments where I actually see some, you know, bright spots and even a little maturation from Interpol. Dare I say even a slight look back at Brilliance. Uh, take, for example, Into the Night. I actually really like this track. It's a very nocturnal sounding track with some serious danger thrown in as well. This sounds like a great modern sound for Interpol. It's a moody, sort of post-punk, sort of art rock tune with, you know, an edge to it. Not only that, but it starts an idea and it finishes it up, too. It's all I can really ask for. And most importantly, for a few short minutes, Interpol sound like a cohesive unit. I don't even mind that it goes over five minutes long. Call me nuts, but I have a lot of the same feelings on Mr. Credit. It's a lot of the deep cuts here that actually make more of a mark on me than any one of the singles. I like the crunchy riff that we get here, and Paul's performance might be his best. It's a great sound. It just sounds like it came, like, really naturally to Interpol. And Renegade Hearts might be the best track here. It's got a riff that I absolutely love. It's dreary, it's heartbroken, and once again, they sound like a cohesive unit. In their own Interpol sort of awkward way, it's once again moments like this where I see some actual maturation. It's a progressive sound for the band that would be perfect uh, for this time in their career if they fleshed it out a little bit more. And it's also the first track here that my initial thought was, I, I need to listen to it again as soon as it was over. And Greenwich is one of the nicest surprises here. 
It's one of the smoother and more elegant tracks to listen to here. It's actually nice on the ears. It's one of the most mature tracks here, which is an interesting turn as well. And I really love by the end of this track, it becomes noisy and dark and genuinely experimental. I would have liked to have seen more risks like this. And as far as a single goes, I think Grand Hotel is probably the best one they put out leading up to this. Not only does it have a healthy dose of the sort of looming, dark post-punk that I grew up on, it's really elegant and beautiful too. There's a rustic beauty to this track. It's a welcome change at the end of the day, mostly because it sounds like this once again came naturally to Interpol. And the thing that we forget about Paul Banks is uh, th there's not much medium in between, but when he wants to, he can come off so effortlessly cool. And that's what this track is. Oh, God, but the rest of this album is just so middle of the road. Like fables. God, I've got so many conflicting thoughts here. On one hand, I don't think the instrumental is that bad. The production's pretty suffocating as well. But here, Paul Banks sounds like he, you know, took some melatonin ready for some power naps. It's middle of the road. I have even more conflicting thoughts on Passenger. Here, I actually like the riff quite a bit, but that annoying drum tapping will be the death of me. I don't hate Paul's performance on this track, but it's very wishy-washy. It feels like it could blow away at any second. And sure, there's some tension, but then it all blows away with this really half-assed chorus. No. Big Shot City, on the other hand, is actually a bit of a reach and a real experiment for the band. And that's something I usually salute. That doesn't help the fact or change the fact that this track is ugly. Unbearably ugly. Like, it's tough to listen to. It just reminds me that Interpol will try just about anything to hang on to any sound these days. And Go Easy Palermo as a finale has a lot going for it. Instrumental wise, this is one of the most captivating and like really instantaneous here. And, and this production is so dark and dangerous. I love that. But then we get the songwriting here. Might be the worst written track on the album. It's just so average. I don't know. I mean, I don't know what I was expecting here. I wasn't expecting much because the singles were just not for me. Uh, but this album is immensely frustrating. There are moments of great maturation. And that show Interpol actually, you know, writing some songs that sound like they came naturally to them. I can't remember the last time I said that about the band. That's great and exciting and really commendable. It's a shame that the rest of this album is bad to unbearably average, and that's kind of where I'm at on this album, guys. Uh, yeah, I'm feeling a decent five on this album, but let me know what you all think down below. If you like the video, be sure to give us a like, give us a subscribe, and let me know down below what you would like for me to chat about in the future. And until next time, have a great day, friends.